After a week's long break, the zombie hunter trial picked back up again in court today with some pretty damning testimony. Brian Patrick Miller, nicknamed the zombie hunter for the way he dressed at Phoenix events, is accused in the canal murders of Angela Brasso and Melanie Burnus in the 1990s. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney has been following this case closely in Brianna. Why was today's testimony such a big deal for prosecutors? Well, it's really the first time that we've heard from a close friend of Brian Patrick Miller, and this wasn't just a friend, but was his roommate at the time Melanie Burnus was killed. We learned what alarming items this friend noticed Brian had at home, and the moment he looked at the newspaper and realized something in the Melanie Burnus murder case was something he had seen before. A first look inside Brian Patrick Miller's personal life at home in 1993, as told by his friend and roommate Ron McLaid, who asked his face not be shown on the stand. The state quickly zeroed in on one topic in particular, large knives. Do you recall at that time seeing him in possession of any knives? Occasionally, yes. McLeod specifically remembered Miller with two knives, but McLeod says one of them was his own chef's knife. Did it ever go missing? Yes. McLeod says Miller admitted to taking it, but the defense attorney made a point to say that knife was back at their house before Melanie Burnus was stabbed to death. McLeod remembered the day he heard about Melanie's murder along the Arizona Canal, an area where he and Miller would often ride their bikes together. He even brought it up to Miller. I was kind of more like joking, saying, you, weren't you out there that night? And that and his response was that he was already riding on the east side of town that night. His bike. Yes. But days later, McLeod was reading an article about Melanie's murder in the local paper, and something caught his attention. It was a turquoise bodysuit. Why does it look familiar to you? I had seen it earlier amongst his possessions. One of the bodysuits was brought back up later in the day by DNA lab criminalist David Duplissa, who cut a piece of fabric from it for testing. But I did cut an area that uh, was surrounding a reddish brown stain in the middle of the crotch. Duplissa tells the court the sperm DNA found on a vaginal swab from Melanie Burnus matched the unknown sperm DNA profile from semen on Angela Brasso's clothing, and that's how they made the connection that the same person likely murdered both girls. With both of them stabbed to death along the canal, the state very clearly wanted to leave an impact on the judge that McGlade saw many concerning things Brian Patrick Miller was keeping inside their home. Did you ever find knives? Yes. Mace? Yes. Articles of women's clothing? Yes. While the state did most of the questioning today, the defense did ask McGlade if he ever saw Brian Patrick Miller aggressive or physical or controversial. McGlade said no and actually told the attorneys Miller was fearful of knives because his mom threatened him with knives when he was younger. This uh, former roommate seems to be a pretty important witness here. Huge. Was there anything else that he noticed in his time with the suspect that was important? Yeah, so there was one more thing that I thought was pretty notable. McGlaid said the two of them would watch a lot of movies together, but he said he found a list of movie titles in Miller's bag and noticed they were all in the genre of slasher movies, which McGlaid found odd since they didn't watch those types of movies together. Now, we know years later, Brian Patrick Miller became his own fantastical character called The Zombie Hunter. That involved a giant gun and costume with a police car with blood dripping down the side. So we now know he may have been thinking about this stuff decades before he brought that character to life. And this trial is nowhere near over. The attorneys confirmed today this will be going into December. Chief investigative reporter Morgan Lowe and I are unraveling it all week by week on the True Crime Arizona podcast. We'll be dropping a new episode with much more about today's testimony soon. And you can catch up on what's happened in the trial so far. Derek. Brianna, thanks for that.